Hello, my name is Felix Siedler and today I would like to present our research project on the relationship between data-enabled predictive control and subspace predictive control. And this is a project I've been working on together with Professor Sergio Lucia and we are both researchers from the Laboratory of Process Automation Systems at Technische University in Dortmund. This is the structure of the presentation and I will start with a short introduction. What we are dealing with in this project is the common problem of system identification and control. And if you want to do model predictive control, we all know that one of the most important things to obtain is the system model. And if the only thing you have is data, you need to do system identification, for which we typically collect input-output data as shown here. And then in the linear case, identify the system matrices A, B, C, D shown here. And sometimes the data for the system identification needs to also satisfy some strict requirements. After we have obtained the system model, we can then write the MPC problem, which is shown here in one possible formulation on the right hand side. An alternative approach to describe the dynamic system is based on the fundamental lemma of behavioral systems, for which I want to introduce the prerequisites on this slide. The idea of this lemma is to describe a system in terms of its behavior, and for this we need to collect T sequences of input-output data of length L, shown here, and we then need to partition the created matrices, shown here at the bottom. And if we have done this, we need to also consider two definitions, most importantly the persistence of excitation definition, with, which essentially boils down to UL having full rank, and also we need to consider the system lag, which is the smallest integer L for which the observability matrix has full rank. And if we have done all of this, we can state the fundamental lemma itself, which is given here on the right hand side. And essentially this lemma says that if we take linear combinations of the columns of this matrix here on the left hand side, with this linear combination factor G, which can be just a vector with arbitrary numbers, we create a new sequence of the system which is ensured to also belong to the system. And of course, this is a very nice and equivalent way to describe a dynamical system. And this lemma gave rise to the data-enabled predictive control method, which is shown on this slide here on the left-hand side. Uh, the method was introduced in 2019 and essentially is based on the lemma. We can recognize the um, formulation of the lemma here as the constraint of the model predictive control problem. And the appeal of this formulation is that we are integrating the typically sequential identification and control step and that we are obtaining also an output feedback MPC approach without explicit state estimation. And because of all of these advantages, DPC is a very active field of research. So on this slide, I'm showing three very recent publications on the topic. And of course, there are many more. And this brings me to the next topic of this presentation, subspace predictive control. A prerequisite for this method is subspace identification, which is about identifying a model that predicts a finite sequence of future outputs of the system. This is very similar to ARCS models, which only predict a single next output of the system. And both subspace identification and ARCS models do this in a linear um, model framework, given here. To identify the parameters of this model, we typically formulate the least squares problem, shown here at the center. And um, the solution of this problem yields the parameter matrix, which we call P. And we can then do the prediction with this expression here at the bottom. With this prediction model, we can then formulate the subspace predictive control method, which was first introduced in 1999 and is shown here on the left hand side. And the most essential part of this problem is the constraint, which is exactly the previously shown prediction model. And if we compare this subspace predictive control problem to the previously shown DPC problem, we see quite a lot of similarities. And um, we also have to keep in mind that both methods are based on the exact same data matrices. So this gives raise to the question if and how both methods are related. And this is the main topic of this presentation. We also want to remark that the similarity of both methods has been recognized previously, for example, by the authors of this work here from 2020. However, in this work, the relationship was investigated only empirically. And we want to look at the fundamentals and analyze also theoretically the similarities between both approaches in this work. This brings me to one of the main contributions of this work on the relationship between DPC and SPC. In theorem one, we are stating that if we record data from a linear time invariant system, which is also deterministic, so not subject to noise, 
we have the case that the presented DPC and SPC formulation yield the exact same solution. An interpretation of this result is to think that DPC implicitly estimates the SPC prediction model at each iteration, and this comes at the cost of significantly increasing the number of optimization variables and constraints. I also want to give a very short intuition of the proof, which is shown on the slide. And essentially what we are doing is we are taking the DPC constraint, so the fundamental lemma, and split it into two parts, this first part and this second part. And from the two parts, we are then able to solve the first part for G, which we do by applying the pseudo inverse of this matrix M. And essentially, if we then plug in G star into the expression two, we obtain this expression four here. And we are able to show in the paper, which I'm skipping now here, that Y and G is equal to zero. So we obtain this last expression here, which is exactly the constraint that is given in the SPC problem. So we have eliminated the DPC constraint from the formulation and ended up with the SPC constraint and uh, essentially have the SPC formulation now. This brings me to the next section of this presentation, the non-deterministic case. The non-deterministic case is just the same setup, but we have now an additive output noise here, which we assume to be zero mean Gaussian noise. And this means that all the data matrices which we are collecting are also noise disturbed. And we denote this by adding this tilde symbol above the matrices. So why is this a problem? The problem is that the deterministic DPC constraint shown here on the right hand side is typically infeasible in this scenario because there's no single vector G that can map this matrix here onto the vector of the system response. So we must adapt the DPC formulation, otherwise we cannot find solutions of the DPC problem. So for the non-deterministic formulation, changes were proposed already in the original work on DPC, and we are presenting here a slightly adapted formulation. The changes with respect to the non-deterministic formulation are highlighted in orange, and these changes are, first of all, the addition of a slack variable sigma y and penalization in the cost function, then an penalization of the optimization variable g, also in the cost function. In the original work on DPC, these slack variables were penalized with the L1 norm. We penalize them here with the L2 norm, which is in accordance to this work um, 2. And we also added an additional slack variable, sigma u, which we need for technical reasons for the proofs that are shown in the following. But in practice, it doesn't have a major influence on the solution of the problem. We also need to talk about non-deterministic SPC. And for non-deterministic SPC, we start by, again, determining the parameters of our prediction model in the same way as before. And we formulate then the problem as shown here um, on the left-hand side. And the changes are, again, marked in orange. And um, the first thing that I want to note is that these changes are not strictly necessary. So in comparison to DPC, SPC is also feasible if we do not do these changes. But for the sake of comparison, we add exactly the same changes essentially so um, that we can then show and discuss the similarity to the DPC formulation. Okay, and this brings me to the relationship between DPC and SPC in the non-deterministic case. The first statement we have to make is that the both shown DPC and SPC formulations for the non-deterministic case are not generally equivalent, which is uh, different in the deterministic case. We have, however, investigated a special case, namely the unconstrained formulation, and we find that under additional assumptions, DPC and SPC are equivalent, and this is what I'm going to show you in the following. And for this purpose, we introduce some new notation, which essentially boils down to vectorizing the DPC and the SPC problem. And for this vectorization, we introduce a new stacked optimization variable for both problems, which we call V. And V is the stacked vector of sigma y, sigma u, and un. And furthermore, we need to introduce some block diagonal weighting matrices, which are shown here at the bottom. With these preparations, we are then able to formulate both problems as shown here. These problems are essentially the same as you have seen before, except for the fact that they are vectorized and for the fact that they do not have the inequality constraints anymore. And because both formulations are now unconstrained quadratic problems, we can find explicit solutions for both problems. The derivation are of course shown in the paper, 
but it's simply linear algebra. And based on these two results, which are shown here now, we can then formulate our second main contribution of this work, which is about the equivalence of DPC and SPC in the non-deterministic case. Our theorem two says that if we have a fixed number of sequences and under some additional considerations, especially the restriction that lambda g has equal to zero, we have that the unconstrained DPC problem and the unconstrained SPC problem yield the same optimal solution. So just to repeat it again, there are some very important restrictions here that, uh, for example, lambda g is equal to zero. We have the unconstrained formulation and we also have a fixed number of recorded sequences. But still, this theorem shows that both methods are closely related in the non-deterministic setting and even equivalent in edge cases. And this brings me to the next section of this presentation, which is the numerical example. We are investigating here a triple mass spring system consisting of three masses which are rotating with two motors to influence the system. All of the important parameters are given here on the right hand side. The first investigation that we conducted was about the deterministic case where we compared DPC and SPC in a simple regulation task. So the measured outputs should be brought to zero. And we see that both uh, controllers succeed in this task, not surprisingly, and we can see visually, but also check by, for example, the cost uh, in the end, that both solutions are exactly equivalent up to computer precision. And this shouldn't come as a surprise, of course, as we have this stated in theorem one. And uh, what we also take from this example is a benchmark cost, which we can then take for the non-deterministic investigation. This investigation is shown on this slide. And what we are doing here is we are only showing disk angle number two, so no inputs, and this is only done for clarity. And we are also doing so-called open loop predictions, where we are solving the optimal control problem for DPC and SPC only once. And we are then comparing the predicted output trajectory with the output trajectory, which is obtained by feeding the sequence of inputs to the true system. And we are doing this for varying numbers of recorded sequences, 100 and 150, and also for two values of the parameter lambda g, 0 and 1. And the first interesting result is that if we compare the results in A and C, we can see visually, but also check, that they are absolutely equivalent. And this is exactly the case when theorem 2 holds. We can also see that DPC does not perform well in case D, where we have lambda g equal to zero and t is larger than 100. And this is to be expected as, for example, the explicit solution of DPC would require the inverse of a singular matrix in this case. DPC does perform well, however, in these cases B and E, where we have lambda g equal to one. And SPC performs good or best for this case F with t equal to 150 and OK with t equal to 100. On this slide, we are presenting a further comparison of both methods for the non-deterministic setting. And in this case, we are doing closed loop comparisons. So the problems are solved repeatedly with feedback information. And we are comparing for varying number of um, recorded sequences, namely 100, 150 and 200 sequences. And what we are seeing is that DPC is always having a slightly higher cost than SPC in all three examples. Um, but more importantly, we are seeing that the computation time with DPC is significantly increased as compared to SPC. And also it's growing with the number of sequences, which doesn't come as a surprise where with SPC, the computation time stays constant. And um, of course, this is because the estimation of the prediction model is done offline. And there, of course, we have an increased complexity with more sequences, but this does not reflect on the online problem. So this brings me to conclusions and outlook. In this work, we have found that DPC and SPC are equivalent in the deterministic case and that they are closely related in the non-deterministic case. And even there, they are equivalent in special cases, which are shown in theorem two. We have also shown in the numerical examples that SPC shows advantages in computation time, but SPC requires an additional identification step, which is not necessary with DPC. As an outlook, we want to further compare these two methods for the non-deterministic case, for example, with the constraint formulations or with more challenging examples. And we are also trying to answer the question if DPC can be advantageous over SPC, for example, when re-estimating the prediction model by updating data matrices is beneficial. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention and we are looking forward to your questions.